Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this using only free programs. So once you have the logo you want to use in mind, the first thing you need to do is to create a scalable vector graphic of your logo. If you already have one, then go ahead and use that. It's undoubtedly going to be a higher quality than anything that Adobe Illustrator or a free vectorizing program could ever generate. If you have access to Illustrator, I recommend you using that before using something like Vectorizer.io. So after vectorizing your logo, you can see it looks pretty similar. This logo is simple, and I recommend you start off simple. More complex logos with different shapes and colors don't always vectorize too well. So this is your first time creating a scalable vector graphic or a 3D model. I recommend you start off simple. So once you've got it generated, you just got to download it and open it in Blender. All right, so here we are in Blender. If you've never used Blender before, I'm gonna turn on some tool tips so you can see what exactly I'm pressing to kind of follow along. But it's a pretty simple program. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. One quick thing I forgot to add while filming the video is that Blender doesn't support vector graphics by default for importing. And you have to enable that by going into Edit, Preferences, click on Add-ons, Type SVG in the search bar, and then check this checkbox next to import export scalable vector graphics. So the first thing we're going to do is import the vector that we just created into Blender. And you'll do that by clicking on File, Import, SVG, and going to wherever you saved it, and just opening it up. It'll probably load in pretty small, but as you can see, this is the vector you just created. And because we chose such a simple one, it comes out looking pretty clean. So now that you've imported your vector into Blender, the next thing you need to do is convert it from a curve to a mesh. You don't need to know what that means, but you do need to do it. So if you press A, you'll have them all selected. Say object, convert to mesh from curve. The next thing you want to do is press A again, select them all, and then press Control J, which will merge them all together into a single object. Next thing to do is press Tab to go into edit mode. Press A to select all of your faces, and then extrude and then just move it until you feel comfortable. I'm just moving my mouse up, move my mouse down, I'll go the opposite direction, but just move it till you feel like it's got a good height. Left click to let go, and there's your 3D model. Once you have your model to a point that you're happy with, you're mostly done. There's just a few things you need to do to make sure that the quality of your mesh isn't too bad for whatever platform you're using it on. So the first thing you want to do is while you're in edit mode still, from when you extruded it, you go to Vertex, Merge Vertices, and By Distance. And you see it removed 20 vertices, so you couldn't really see that there was an issue, but they were, in some places, duplicates of these little vertices on top of each other, and those can cause rendering issues. Once you've done that, you're almost done. All that's left to do is click on the wrench icon right here, click Add Modifier, click Triangulate, and then click Apply. Uh, if you're using this for something like SharePoint Spaces, I found that it really prefers your models have triangle-based surfaces, like most game engines do and rendering APIs do. If you don't do this, you may see some weird rendering issues. You may notice if you were to import this into SharePoint Spaces or something else right now, you would see that it doesn't treat the center of the mesh as the center of the object. It would treat like the corner as the center of the object. And that's because that's where it's defined in the model. So if you want to change that, you can click, well, not in edit mode. So if this is edit mode, press tab to get out of edit mode. Click on your object, click object, set origin, and then origin to geometry. And that will scan the object and figure out where the origin should be based on the mesh. And it's not always perfect, but it gets pretty close. If you decide that you want it a little bit closer, you can manually modify it a little bit by pressing tab, making sure you have everything selected. Press G and then whatever axis you want to move it along, or just move by hand and just kind of eyeball it until it gets to a point you're satisfied with. That looks pretty central to me. So if I tab out, you can see the logo will now treat this part, this point as the center. So the next thing to do is to export your model to whatever file format you need it to be. You can do OBJs, STLs, FBX, whatever you want. For SharePoint Spaces, I prefer using FBX because materials get baked into the model and it doesn't require any extra files, just the basic FBX. So what you want to do 
is you'll click File, Export, FBX, navigate to wherever you want to save it, name it whatever you want to name it, and click Export. And now you can see if you upload your model into SharePoint Spaces, that looks exactly how you'd expect it to. Depending on what you use this for, you may not have to bake animations into your model itself, but with SharePoint Spaces, that is a requirement. So if that's something that people are interested in, I could do that in my next video and show how to animate those files. Um, but once you animate them, it really does kind of bring them to life.